Hey, this is Mr. Izad here to discuss an emerging trend in the realm of education, robotics. Now, while some may see these robots as little more than just toys, they do have implications in education and exposing students to skills they could one day need in STEM fields. We will explore some of these implications in this video. Specifically, as these STEM fields may involve knowledge of coding, which could involve math concepts, we will explore the implications that use of robots can have specifically in math classes. Now when it comes to the practice of math, there are two schools of thought which are noteworthy. One is mathematical realism. Proponents of this school of thought believe that math is something that is real. It happens all around us, and we discover math throughout our observations of the world. Then they are the mathematical anti-realists, or fictionalists who believe that math is not something that actually exists, and that people created math to describe the processes that we observe. Therefore, math is imaginary. As Lakoff and Nunes, authors of Where Math Comes From, point out, humans are always inquiring, discovering, and inventing things and systems, systems such as those found in math, that help us do these things. Regardless of what school of thought you are a proponent of, Math concepts can be very abstract and difficult to understand if not taught within a context where these concepts can quote-unquote happen, whether their occurrence is something that is contrived by the human mind or something that is discovered in natural phenomena. Robots such as the Sphero can provide us with the context in order to do so. For instance, one of the New Jersey State Learning and Common Core standards posit that students should be able to basically apply knowledge of various degrees of angles on a circular plane, and a Sphero can help students do that. Here is one way in which this could be accomplished. When programming the Sphero, just imagine that Sphero is the center of a circle, and thus the common endpoint of two separate rays. The direction the Sphero is facing can be one imaginary ray. The direction in which it is traveling is another ray. So if I want the Sphero to travel 90 degrees, and 180 degrees, and 270 degrees, So it is evidence that on the most basic level, Sphero can help students to visualize math concepts. It can also be used to teach coding concepts. And in terms of various professional fields, there is speculation as to how it can be used or deployed by police and the military to scout areas. So as technology becomes more prominent in various fields, being able to code would be a useful skill to have. And learning how to code like this can open doors for students to enter various STEM fields in engineering. Take self-parking vehicles, for instance. Obviously, a code would have to be written in a language such as Python or C++ in order for the car to know how to park given certain conditions. This process can be simulated on a smaller scale using the Sphero. For instance, imagine that Sphero is the rear of the car. Imagine that the two books are the rear and front of two cars that Sphero must park in between. Write a code to park Sphero so that he is in between the two spaces, and ensure that there is at least 4 inches space available in between Sphero and the rear of the car he has to park behind in order to accommodate for the rest of the length of the car that he would be a part of. Ensure that Sphero does not hit the curb or the car behind him, and use math concepts to rationalize how you wrote the code. So the first thing I notice when I program the Sphero to move 180 degrees at the speed of 20 is that it moved approximately 3 inches. As I want the robots to imitate the motion of a car as closely as possible when parking, I want it to move backward and diagonally. I have to determine how many degrees I want the Sphero to move. As such, I apply principles of geometry and trigonometry to determine how I should program the Sphero. After the Sphero backs up, I make a new starting point for the long side of the rectangular space, which is 12 inches. I then divide the rectangle in half, creating two triangles. What I want to know is the length of the hypotenuse to see how far the robot should travel. Using the a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared equation, I determine the length is about 13.2 inches. Also, because the triangle that is formed is a right triangle and has a 90 degree angle, I can use the sides of the triangle to determine how many degrees the other two angles are. Using simple trigonometry formulas, 
I was able to determine that the larger of the two angles was approximately 65.3 degrees. Considering the direction the sphero is facing, I would have to turn 90 degrees in order to face the adjacent side of the triangle. Thus, I add 65 degrees to those 90 degrees to determine that in order for Sphero to travel in the direction that I wanted to, which is essentially along the hypotenuse, I would have to program it to move approximately 155 degrees. Taking into account also that I want there to be enough space to back the Sphero up once more after it moves diagonally without hitting the curb, I code it to travel 150 degrees at a speed of 20. And now we test our calculations. So even though I didn't meet one of the criteria, I still have the sphere relatively in the position that I wanted it, and I did not hit what would have been the curb. Of course, as with all coding, you may not get it right the first time and might have to work out the kinks, and the original code that was written may have to be revisited. In any case, the students would have to use their mathematical calculations to justify the code they wrote as per the criteria for the assignments. Essentially, strategic use of the coding of robots, if appropriately put to use, engages the students in problem-based learning, thus bringing relevance to the concepts and deepening students' understanding of them.